Hey friends, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and I'm doing a tea break at the quilt frame. I've had a lot of people ask about the stuff I wear on my hand. This is, my hands are getting arthritic and quilting is very, can be very, very painful. So when my hands are feeling good, that one's wrecked. When my hands are feeling good, one of y'all sent me these and I just love these. These are called finger cots and it helps me to grip the needle, to grab the needle when I need to pull it through. So I just put that on my, my middle finger there. And this, uh, again, I got this idea from you all this is my quilting glove it is a um it's an it's kind of an elastic glove it keeps te it's tension it's a tension glove and it keeps tension on my hand so that i can grab the needle and this here is my thimble it is very much like almost like a guitar pick meets a thimble like a finger pick meets a thimble but it gives me a strong fingernail with which to push the needle through and that is my setup for quilting now a lot of people are going to notice I have not been on the internet much lately and well my internet was crappy yesterday but um, I haven't been on the internet much lately I've been pulling back from YouTube a little bit because I realized that I was, um, uh, I was killing myself, guys. I I was really 90%, well, not 90%, because I do have fibromyalgia, but a good 70% of my pain is due to stress. And so I realized that I was pouring way too much of myself into YouTube. Does that make sense? I was pouring way too much of myself into the internet. So I decided without fanfare and without any big announcements or anything like that to take a little bit of time off. Not off, but just scale back so that I could get this done. This is the last section of the second last row. There's only one more row to go and that's this top one here. But I wanted to get this done and I just wanted to take some time for myself. I mean, is it gonna hurt me financially to pull back? It already has. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta do, um, sometimes you just gotta do what's right for you, right? So that's exactly what I've been doing. Oh, oh, I've gotta say, they're over there. You can't see them, they're over there. Thank you, Sue Ann, for the quilting sharps and the these larger needles. These larger needles are actually exactly what is working best because they're much stronger. I put a lot of pressure on these needles when I start weaving them through fabric. Through three layers of fabric, it takes a lot. Now this is where this thimble comes in real handy. You see? So my nephew, um, who got married, and this is his and his wife's quilt, and it's a year and a half late, but he said he would rather have it done properly and have it late than me rush through it. He, I made him and his brothers all quilts when they were young, um, probably 25 years ago, and this was back when I didn't know what I was doing and I was just sewing squares together and then tying quilts, which is still a quilt. Excuse me. So I had a chat with my nephew recently and because his quilt from when he was, I don't know, 14 or 15, is in tatters. Do you know why it's in tatters? Because he used it every single day of his life when it wasn't in the wash. So, 
his my sister, his mom, smuggled it to me. And I'm going to redo it for him. But I'm going to reuse the original squares. I am going to tie it again. And I'm re going to reuse the original squares plus fabric from his wife's family. So that he and she will, they will, this, this is an heirloom quilt from my family. But um, I told Mikey I would redo his other quilt if, as soon as he got me some fabric from his wife's family. So that... Uh, so that they could have one together as well. Even though this is for them, it's got nothing of her family in it, right? So there's that, and I just got a, um, I got a pic couple of pictures sent to me from one of my nieces. And uh, she said, my summer quilt's on, and she showed me, they both, she has two quilts. My habit is, is I would make, I made all the quilts for the kids. All my nieces and nephews got a quilt. Wow, it's really hot. And uh, they all got a second adult quilt like this when they got married. But my nieces have, most of my nieces have not got married and not had children. So I made um, them their second quilt already. Actually, there's a story to it. Jessica and Amanda are my nieces to my one brother. And Jessica and a friend of hers came up to visit. See, I still have to use my thumbnail, but when they came up to visit, Jessica saw a log cabin quilt I was experimenting with. It was my real first real log cabin quilt. And she licked it. Ah, right down the frame. She said, that's mine, I licked it. So I gave it to her when it was done. Well, then her sister phoned me and said, where's mine? Where's mine? What you do for one, you got to do for all. So I made her one too and gave it to her for Christmas. But she sent me pictures yesterday. Her, the original quilt, the Tide quilt, um, is her couch quilt for snuggling on the couch with her cats. And the quilt I, the log cabin quilt I made her, is on her bed for the summer because it's a lightweight quilt kind of like this one so it's really nice to know that they are loved not just loved but used you know what I mean and treasured so we will see I actually have an idea for um, the quilt that my that I have to do redo for Mikey is because they're squares I may cut those squares into thirds and then blend two kinds of two, the two fabrics of his and hers in, in each block. I might blend some. But the thing is, is it's all stretchy fabric and polyester and shit. Stuff I didn't know I wasn't supposed to quilt with back then. And I said to Mikey, I just want to recover it. And he goes, yeah, but you got to recover it with the original fabric. I said, Mikey, there's not enough. And he goes, I'll get you some from Amanda. And he was so excited that I, you know, what are you going to say? No. But I'm actually honored. I'm really honored. And I'm sorry you're not seeing my facial expressions as I do this. It's getting really, really hot in here. Okay. I do believe these are like a, a size 7 sharp. And there, it's just absolutely perfect. So, um, I just might make a video of when I start, when I finish this quilt, and I start Mikey and Amanda's. Yeah, there's a lot of Amandas in my family. Um, Mikey, Howie has a nephew, Mikey, who has a fiance named Amanda. They've been together for years, so. Um, but then I have a Mikey and Amanda, and then I have a niece Amanda. So, I mean, it can get pretty confusing in my family at times. But, now, some folks asked, do I not? And how do I stop things from pulling through? So, I'm going to show you. Now, this is what I do. All right? I start not here, but back here, and I go up.
See, I don't knot my threads. And I just went up to the corner, and I'm going to pull the thread all the way through so that the end goes through the very first hole. Don't pull too hard. And then I'm going to go back through the same stitches. And that's how I anchor the thread so that it doesn't pull through. And I don't have to use a knot. Somebody asked me what kind of thread I use. 100% spun polyester. Polyester. I used to buy this stuff at the dollar store. And it works. So, it has some give. So that when um, sheets are wa uh, the quilt is washed, because yes, <laughs> they get washed. My nephew Andrew, Mikey's younger brother, went, um, phoned me last year and said, Okay, Be Aunt Bev, I want to I wanna wash the quilt. And I said, Okay. And he goes, Well, what do I do? Take it to a dry cleaner? I said, No. You put it in the washing machine on cool and delicate. And then you air fluff it to dry or hang it on a line. He goes, It's machine washable? I said, Andrew, do you honestly think I would make a quilt for you that wasn't machine washable? I said, heck, the first thing I do when it's off, when it's done and no longer on the, when, when the binding's on and everything, is I put it through the wash to make sure that all the seams hold. Like, I put the top through the wash before I put it on the frame, and then I put the whole quilt through the wash again when it's finished. So, yeah, my quilts are machine washable. So, um... And my nephew, Aaron, he is a teacher in Australia. And he does a seminar or something every year, or one year he did a seminar. I don't know what it was. But he actually used my quilt that I made him for his wedding. And he lectured on, uh, did lecture, but he did this seminar on history and family history and all those things and he used my quilt as an example because when I made his quilt um, I made it from fabrics that uh, I had gotten from all over the place right from you know family all over the place so that he would have like a universal hug when they received it in Australia. And they received their quilt on their first wedding anniversary, so I'm really falling behind. But my hands aren't as young as I they used to be. You know what I mean? Now, I want to show you. Okay, I'm going to go back through here again, just to anchor it, because what happens now, I go back through a couple of stitches so that it doesn't cause undue stress Okay, there's my spot right above there. Okay. It doesn't cause undue stress on the fabric when I suddenly jump from here to here. And I do that by going in between the layers of the fabric to the other side. I'm going back through the same hole there. And then I'm going down to where I want this to be. And you don't make this come out the back. You just push it horizontally through the fabric. Now, I hold my tape and I pull this. And now we can start quilting. And that actually secures it. Because if you get a lot of stretching and you just go from here through the fabric and here without anchoring it, if you just put the needle between the fabric from where you end here and then you go in between the two layers of fabric and come out here, what's without anchoring it here and here, what's going to happen is when this quilt gets washed and stuff like that, that thread can snap, but now it's anchored at both ends. So it's not going to be an issue when it does.
Now, if you're wondering why I don't put a finger caught on my thumb, it's because I do use my thumbnail to push the needle in sometimes until I can get the edge on it. And my other hand is underneath. You can see my other hand is underneath bracing the fabric and the needle and I feel it coming all the way through because it pricks my finger a little bit. You get a callus. It is a beautiful day. I went out and finished thinning out all my rutabagas yesterday and yes I ate the greens for lunch. My watermelon plants are up. My beans are up. I got one parsnip. So I'm going to have to put more parsnips in that bed. They may take a long time to come up, but you know what? I got until they probably won't be harvested until December. So they've got time. But the beans are up. The watermelon's up. The zucchini's up. Everything is doing its job. And I only had to water the garden once this weekend because we got some rain, which I'm really happy about. Okay, we are on the final row. And I've got my camera at an angle, so I hope you can see me doing this. Thank you, Sue Ann, for the needles. They're just exactly what I needed. I appreciate that. Now I'm just going to flip all of these down and we're going to just roll it on down and i don't know how much farther it's going to let me go i'm going to unpin it from this last piece because i don't need it and then i'm going to pin this right to the backing fabric and now i can let go this tail that has been holding everything together that pin right where it was or close to it. I'm going to bring some more pins along just in case I need it. As you get near the end, you're going to see some little buckles, but I'm actually going to pull these up. This is how I can see this needs to be pulled up some, but get it folks, we are on the last row. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying, and that is your tea break quilt update. Take care, God bless.